Hello there. Welcome to Sumit Academy. I hope that you're keeping up with my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you do not miss out on my previous or future videos. In this video, the second in the series of seven videos on the selection procedure at the Services Selection Boards or SSBs, we shall continue on to the main testing. In my earlier videos, we have already learned about the procedure of preliminary screening after which a large number of candidates are sent home. Since we are hopefully not one of those and have been selected for the main phase of the detailed personality testing for the next four to five days, let us understand how this phase works. The psychological tests, the first of them are pen and paper test. Now it has four parts, the instructions of which are given before you start each part. You must listen to the instructions carefully lest you make silly mistakes while attempting the test. This test takes about one hour and is the primary and major source of data for assessment of personality by the psychologist. It tries to uncover the unconscious level of your mind. First is the thematic appreciation test or TAT. Since it is a test of imagination, you are free to respond in your own way. You will be shown 12 screens one after another and will have to write a story around the picture shown to you. A total of 11 pictures are shown while the 12th is a blank screen. Each is shown for 30 seconds and you get 4 minutes to write a story in approximately 100 to 120 words. Remember, this is not a test of English language. Allow me to give you some practical hints for this test. First, analysis of a story brings out certain facts. A central character has issues or problems in life. He or she understands the problems, thinks about possible solutions, takes a decision as to what to do and executes the plan of action. Resources, both men and material, are used to solve the problem. The ending should be on a positive note of optimism. Second, what actions are taken and how actions are implemented needs to be given more importance as they bring out your personality. Third, manage and organize thoughts and actions to be expressed in 100 to 120 words. Choice of words and logical sequencing of thoughts and actions show clarity of thought and ability to express yourself. Like essay writing, your story should be divided into three parts. Your introduction should be about 10 to 15 percent of your word length and should bring out as to who is the central character and what is the issue or problem. Then the main body of your story should be about 80 percent of the total and should speak about the details of how and what, utilization of resources and should show a logical and practical approach. Be specific and unambiguous. And finally, your conclusion should be about 10 to 15 percent of your story and should have a final solution or outcome and should be positive and optimistic. Do not indulge in tragedies and dramatics. Do not kill off your character or give a sad 
pessimistic ending. As usual, to practice, please do a Google search for thematic appreciation test or TAT and practice a few of them. Don't try to remember the stories. Remember the concepts and ideas. Modify and apply them as per the situation in the picture shown to you. And yes, do take care of your handwriting. Those illegible scribbles will not fetch you any credit. Be careful of your words. Do not use abusive, racist or sexist language. And avoid writing on religion or politics or any character from there. Unless, of course, the picture itself depicts someone or something from there. Do practice writing brief stories at home. There would be scope for improvement in successive attempts. Little imperfections are just fine. Let them not create undue pressure and make you underconfident. You should start a story with a name for the central character. Do not try to give too many detail about his, her background or life story. Unwanted details increase the length of the introduction and will reduce the main body of your story. Second, Pay attention to the center and four corners of the picture for human figures and objects. Focus on number, age, sex and facial expressions. Notice the dress and body postures. Make a reasoned decision as to what are they doing to the extent possible. This is possible to be completed quickly. Preferably in 10 seconds, being an exercise of and in your mind. Third, can, how can you identify a theme or problem after having been shown a picture? The action that the characters are indulging in in the picture is a major clue. Focus on foreground and background to identify a related issue or problem when it is not clearly visible. Since the picture is shown for 30 seconds, use the next 20 or so seconds to create a plot or storyline till the conclusion. Try to be practical and realistic using your imagination and logic. It is not advisable to change the storyline halfway down even if you feel the need to. It is likely to create a distinctly visible disconnect in the flow and logic of the thought process, making the story look preconceived. So how would you identify the central character for the story? The character who is at the center or closest to action is most likely the one. When there is only one character, he, she automatically becomes the central one. When there are more than one characters, anyone can be treated as a hero. Put yourself in his or her shoes, feel like that person in that situation and let the emotions be generated. Certain pictures will have some characters with negative emotions. Yes, it is advisable to incorporate the negative emotions inside the story. Such stories need to delve upon what caused them and how to overcome such negative emotions. The end should have positivity, hope and optimism. With proper planning, all stories can be completed within approximately 100 words each. If one odd story is incomplete, don't let it affect your other stories. Shorter stories should be avoided. Each picture and story is independent of the others. Now, there being 11 pictures, each should have a different theme. After reading your story, one should get a feeling that the problem or issue is resolved 
and so that you are ready for the blank screen where you have to now identify your achievements or those of your siblings, parents or friends. Avoid repeating the themes of the previous stories and for heaven's sake, don't repeat any of the previous stories themselves. Your personality will be brought out by these pictures. Remember that they will in all likelihood be hazy. So let your imagination play an active role in writing the stories. Do write fast and as I told you, legibly. It should be legible, readable by the understandable by the person who is going to check your paper. While practicing at home, your first aim should be to complete a story in just under four minutes. Your second aim should be to see if you have adhered to the story structure I have just told you about. Now reread the story and see if there is any irrelevant line or word. Then rewrite the story to remove as many errors and mistakes as you may have identified. Now, how do you write that? Your sentences should be of 10 to 12 words each. So that means you will have 10 to 12 sentences in your story. Some common mistakes are incomplete and partial grasp of essentials of a picture due to lack of attention. Focusing on non-essential leads to wrong priorities. Number of people and material are resources to be used. Their non-use displays shortcomings in observation. Do not change the mood or the setting of the story itself. In an effort to show positive attitude, even tears due to pain and suffering are sometimes converted into tears of happiness. Not correct. If a boatman in a lungi or Bermudas <laughs> reminds you of the dull lake of Kashmir, well, it will show lack of knowledge. Neglecting or paying little attention to foreground and background and not correctly identifying emotions on faces causes this sort of problems. The stories are to be created and woven around the picture and the situation shown therein. Little or partial connect with the picture results in a preconceived story. It's like I have the story and I will somehow find and create a link with the picture. Ask a simple question to yourself. Are the actions of the characters in your story contributing to the solution of the perceived problem or issue? If not, think what to do and how to solve it. If not, what are you going to do? Any actions which do not contribute to the solution don't deserve a place in the story. It is rather difficult to offer complete in-depth solution to more than one problem in the limited time at your disposal. Rather than specific actions, generalization and beating around the bush becomes a norm for the candidates. Inability to handle problems and offer specific solutions is displayed in such a situation. It is best to stick to one simple manageable problem and give your solution to it in the story. Well, that's all from me in this, the second video on the SSB selection procedure. We shall continue in the third video in this series. Do like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you do not miss out on my previous or future videos. And if you want to get in touch, do drop in a mail to sumitacademy20 at gmail.com. I also gratefully acknowledge the information, guidance and help rendered to me by the officers who have been previously posted at the Army and Air Force SSBs and in particular to Anand Verma for publicly sharing a booklet 
on the subject. Till later then. Cheers.